VC is a very close to TV series. If you're successful enough, if you've got like a wonderful rating and huge returns, there will be definitely season two, season three, season four. So we want to be like maybe like Simpsons or Law and Order with 10 plus seasons in our life. So and uh, every new investment for us is a new episode. We don't enjoy like drama and horrors too much. Hey everyone, this is Prashant and I'll be your host for the VC 10X podcast. And today we have Alex Men with us. Alex is a partner at Begin Capital where they're investing in B2B SaaS, deep tech, artificial intelligence and fintech startups at the seed stage. In this episode, we talk about how venture capital is very similar to a TV series. Investment thesis at Begin Capital is some exciting portfolio companies and something that Alex wishes he had learned at the start of his BC career that he has learned now. So without wasting any time, let's dive straight in. Hey Alex, so good to have you on the VC 10X podcast. How are you doing? Hi Prashant. Uh, everything is amazing. Thank you for inviting. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. And uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. And I'm uh, pretty excited by what you're doing at Begin Capital, especially after I visited your website. Uh, and we'll get to that entire thing. But uh, before we get into the nitty gritties of the fund, Let's first talk about your story and how you started investing. Of course. Uh, Alex Mann here, uh, originally from Israel. Uh, my background is 12 years in private equity. I worked in various funds, started in Austria in Minor Bank, then moved to France and Greece with strategic initiatives, capital partners, then moved to London with Invest AG. 45 deals. 3.5 billion in total value uh, was amazing experience uh, but at some point of time I always wanted to do something with my father so he was like a great scientist so I quit private equity and we started our own startup uh, which provides smart city smart parking solutions and consulting for different countries of the world uh, my father was already like 72 years old uh, he was like very close friend, friend of mine. So always wanted to do something together. I became a CEO. He was like CTO, CEO, CMO, switching between the roles. And it was like quite a cool story at work. I was the boss at home. He was the boss. So uh, combining these roles, never fundraised, but reached approximately 15 million in IRR. Uh, started to invest as a business angel closed 13 deals, uh, three exits, got addicted. So the logical next step was to become a VC. Uh, it took me probably a year to persuade my partner, Ruslan, that we can raise a fund, then two weeks to fundraise. And in maybe summer, autumn 2019, we established Begin Capital. Uh, it was a fund with $62 million under management. Uh, so here we are now. Yeah, that, that's a great story. And I believe you're right now uh, investing through your fund too. Uh, is that correct? Uh, no, we're still deploying money from the fund one. And okay. uh, now we are in the middle of fundraising for the fund two. So, okay. uh, so, so the fund one was uh, $60 million. Is that right? 60. Six oh, zero. Got it. Got it. Six zero, 60. Got it. That's that's a great number to start with, uh, right? So now now talking about Begin Capital itself, and uh, when I visited the website, it's uh, one of the most coolest websites, VC websites I've seen, and I have been uh, on a lot of VC websites while researching for these episodes and looking up different VCs, and I haven't seen anything like it. And I tweeted about it as well. So uh, congrats on that for like standing out in the VC game when there are so many VCs already doing this stuff. Standing out is kind of difficult and I see that you're doing it. But uh, talk about uh, this concept. I see that on the website, begincl.com, right? Yeah. Uh, so if you if you go there, uh, you see that it is a, this VC fund is compared to a, kind of like a Netflix series that uh, there is a season and there are different episodes, there are actors and all these different kinds of things. So can you talk about how, uh, all about this concept, how this is relevant in the VC context? Sure, of course. First, thank you for the kind words, Prashant. Uh, really appreciate it. 
Uh, to be honest, I do believe they are not the coolest website, and I think there are several VC funds with even better web pages. Uh, for example, check the website from Daphne, uh, VC, a VC fund from Paris. They, are really, they have a really cool website as well. Uh, so the story was that, uh, unfortunately, the majority of VCs have like almost the same web pages. Uh, that looks like a little bit copy paste. Like, here's our team. Uh, this is how much value we can bring. Uh, this is our portfolio. And as a new fund, probably you need to be a little bit different uh, because, like, it was more than enough in early 2000s where you can just say, hey, I'm a VC, I've got money, and everybody was uh, uh, reaching you proactively trying to fundraise from you. Now the situation is a little bit different and it is a huge competition for the best founders. So you need to attract their attention and very new fund. So we wanted to be like remembered. So the website was like a first little step forward to start our journey. Regarding the TV series, look, for me, it's a little bit obvious that we see is a very close to TV series. If you are successful enough, if you've got like a wonderful rating and huge returns, there will be definitely season two, season three, season four. So we want to be like maybe like Simpsons or Law and Order with 10 plus seasons in our life. So, and uh, every new investment for us is a new episode. So, uh, we don't enjoy like drama and horrors too much, so we are looking maybe for something uh, a little bit better. But every season, like maybe 20 episodes, and we want to continue, we want to be in this market for a long time. Love it, love that analogy. Uh, and is, is the thesis, the, the fund thesis, also somewhat related, or what's the thesis here at Begin Capital? Uh, Look, a small story behind it, to be like completely honest with you. As a new fund, we've been drafting our investment strategy maybe for five or six times already. And then a great investment opportunity comes and our strategy goes to the trash bin because like we can't miss that opportunity. Uh, so consider us as a generalist, but the main thesis is we love to invest in global founders underrepresented, underfunded markets. Uh, we love to be the first international investor for the startup from Armenia, Denmark, Estonia, Ukraine, Croatia, help founders to enter, for example, United Kingdom, where, uh, where we are incorporated, or the S market, raise Series A, Series B here from a large fund with whom we partner and help them to grow globally. So probably generalists, we do not investments in the areas where we understand completely nothing. Like, I don't know anything about biotech or oil and gas. So global founders from underfunded markets and help them to grow globally. Right, right. That makes sense. And uh, I, I saw on the website that uh, you're kind of focusing on the AI startups as well. So is, is that kind of a focus or that's not a focus? Yes, we love AI startups as well, but... Uh, we also like very active in B two B SaaS, uh, right. a little bit in deep tech, uh, active in uh, fintech uh, companies, marketplaces. So, got it. Yeah, right. Not uh, to miss the investment opportunities. Right, right. Got it. And uh, uh, when you when you're making these investments, what uh, exact things do you look for in startups? What trades do you look for in these startups? Uh, while deciding whether to invest or not? Uh, Prashant, I believe that my answer will be quite boring here because uh, probably I can't say anything new that uh, all other like, very successful investors you've interviewed uh, have said. Uh, so for us, it's like oh, founders is a key. First, hires are super important. We want to see the capability of the founders to hire amazing professionals from uh, day one. We love tested hypotheses, 
time and concise of the market and of course like product quality which is also very important i know many vcs prioritize traction and sales but we don't want to be involved in selling the product with a shit quality so we want uh, the product to be very good as well so but i can't tell you like something here that none other fund uh, has ever uh, thought about right absolutely and uh, let's say you find uh, a potential investment opportunity and you find the uh, idea interesting and you want to invest uh, then uh, how do you conduct due diligence uh, and like uh, on what basis are you uh, like verifying that this is genuinely as good opportunity as it seems on the outside uh look there is small team there are just the four of us so uh, and all of us are decision makers here so the first whether we want to go to the due diligence and deep dive and send the company term sheet we need we've got like three types of walls love like and dislike uh, so to go to the investment committee and to start the diligence process we need at least two love and no more than one dislike uh, in our team so usually one team member starts deep diving uh, the investment opportunity becomes its advocate then he needs to persuade another person from the team to have the project and then we go to investment committee uh, regarding like the due diligence we actively involve our advisors and sometimes our LPs who have amazing experience in various businesses uh, the key basis of the due diligence is not to waste the precious time of the founders because I don't want to be the fund who spends a lot of time from the founder they got a lot of things to do so I want this process to be for them like relatively easy uh, yes we deep dive in product quality we want to understand the burn how much we, time and money we have until the next round uh, we want to understand whether it's profit whether it is possible to make the company profitable if something goes wrong on the uh, financial markets uh, and we are like do like relatively limited legal and financial dd because we know it's an early stage we know that uh, it's almost impossible to have like everything uh, in place there and potential fraud probably is a lower risk than uh, the company dying because of like any other market conditions so here's our approach we try to be fast uh, we do believe that we are capable to close the deals in several weeks right right yeah that's a great approach and i know for a fact that uh, fundraising for the founders is actually can, can be a full-time job as well because it takes so much time reaching out to vcs and then if you get a call then pitching and then if they're not interested then that time goes waste in a way unless they make some intros or something right so and that's always good to like uh, be empathetic towards the founders that are pitching and like if you're interested only then dig deeper if not like pass it on or maybe give some intros right uh, so i love that front uh, saving time for the founders besides uh, I w- if you want to mention some of your exciting portfolio companies that you have invested in uh, i would love to hear about them oh i love all of them but maybe it's worth to mention today the company called founder is up is based in New York. Uh, if you consider the global charity market, uh, only in United States there are more than 1.5 million of nonprofits, and every year they raise 35, 40 billion dollars uh, in online donations only. But if you consider like this market of like online uh, donations. It is relatively in a stone age uh, because like what e-commerce company have tested years ago like A-B testing, optimization on the website, conversion optimization, almost none of the charity company have un- even tried. So Funder is up is one line of code that helps charities to fundraise much more. 
uh, within like one or two weeks after the integration, uh, the company is capable to raise like 50, 70 percent more in online donations with relatively easy mechanics. Uh, so I love this company not only because it is it has an amazing traction and amazing team, but they're also doing like great stuff for like society. Uh, I think they already raised more than 600 million of additional money for global nonprofits. And it is like amazing. Right. Absolutely. I, I love the mission that they're on there. And that's, that's so great. And, uh, now, uh, since you have previously been a founder as well of a company and that was doing a lot of money in business, right? You said you're 15 million ARR without raising any funding. So, and since now you're a VC investing money in other people's startups. So, uh, do you ever think that it all it's necessary for a business to raise external capital to be a successful business? Has it ever happened that you see a good opportunity, but you want to advise them that don't raise VC money instead, just go on your own and build this business because that can also be done. Right. Yeah, I think especially uh, in 2022 and uh, probably at the beginning of 2023, where financial markets are not as good as they used to be. So uh, for several uh, companies from our portfolio, our advice was, guys, go to the profitability mode. Like uh, everybody loved the growth within the last five years. But now it's also super important not only to show a holistic growth, but to show that your business model works. So uh, don't waste your time in raising money. Prove that your business model works. Prove that you can become profitable. And then like, investors globally will believe in you again. Right, absolutely. And uh, I believe one more thing that uh, founders fall for in a way is that they go for raising money too early, right? Uh, and in this market, especially, that is probably the biggest mistake you can make that you ha haven't done much work, you don't have that good validation, don't have early customers, but you want to go and raise money. And uh, and even then, you would still get interest from VCs to get on calls with you, what you're building and stuff like that. Uh, but you're going to give up much more equity while trying to do, do that uh, while not having any proof this will work or not, right? And you're basically putting a ton of pressure on yourself at a very, very early stage. Uh, and instead, you can just go and focus on your product, get some early users, get that feedback, build a good product, have those early paying customers, maybe maybe even build a self-sustainable bootstrap it to the point wherein when you go to a VC, you have a respectable business already there and then you can scale from there, right? So, Absolutely. Right. So that's that's something that more founders need to be doing, especially in this environment where capital isn't cheap anymore. <laughs> like everyone isn't getting it, right? So you, if you want to save time, then just put your time into your company and then see later on when things improve, right? So uh, one, one more thing I want to ask you is about uh, how do you add value to your portfolio companies once you have invested in them? Uh, how you how are you helping them uh, be successful? Oh, you know, probably like investors love to tell how much value they would bring like all the time. So I don't want to be like another VC uh, phrasing themselves. Uh, but probably the only thing I can say here is that we are available for our portfolio companies 24-7. It will always be that if founder needs to speak with me, uh, I will speak with, the, with him or her on the, on the same day. And maybe the thing I'm currently most proud of being a fund manager is that already nine portfolio founders asked about an allocation in our next fund. So they voluntarily asked for this and probably this is like the best thing that could be absolutely and, and I'm, I'm really yeah. proud of it yeah exactly 
Uh, and do you do you plan for these fall on rounds as well when you're making your investment plans and things like that? Uh, are you also like keeping a part of the fund aside that okay, this is for investing in the fall on rounds of our portfolio companies? So is that a part of the plan or is that like if the opportunity arises, then we can do that? Uh, look, Prashant, I always reserve uh, sufficient funds for fall on rounds. Uh, but then it depends how the company is growing. Of course, like everybody wants to do for one in the champions. Everybody wants to maintain their shareholding in the best companies who are going to become the big unicorns or like uh, super strong opportunities. But then it depends. Uh, probably I don't want to do for once in the company where we made a mistake investing in that because it's like uh, you just burn additional money and I don't want to save my bad decision with additional money like giving the company the second chance. But for the companies where we do believe that there were no sufficient mistakes from the founders, yes, they're underperforming right now, but there was like, I don't know, global pandemic uh, or any other shock, they're always here to help. If we believe that, yes, this business model works, Yes, now uh, there was a shock or like the company is underperforming, but the management is doing a great job. The product is uh, strong, but we need to do this, this and this. Yes, here we're always uh, happy to do additional follow-ons and uh, help the company to grow. Right. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a great approach. And my last main question for you would be before we move on to the rapid fire round uh, is about... Uh, what what's something that you've learned now uh, after these years playing the VC game uh, that you wish you had learned maybe at the beginning of this journey and that would have probably saved you some money or some mistakes? <laughs> In this job, we do mistakes all the time. So probably I'll tell you two things. Uh, the first one, it was like a common mistake when I was a business angel. And let's call it idea is less is less important than a founder or a founding team. Uh, so there are many great ideas, but uh, you can't invest in idea. You invest in a team that is capable to make it work. And the second one is a great deal on a good terms is much better than a good deal on a great terms. I was trying to find like uh, better valuations uh, uh, or better deal terms, but now I understand that it may be wrong. Right, right. So you're saying that sometimes the VC also needs to be flexible. If you see a good deal, then we need to make it work somehow, right? Great. All right. So now uh, moving on to the rapid fire round where I'll ask you yeah. five quick quick questions about the fund and you can give five quick answers. Sounds good. All right. So the first one is what are the sectors and regions you invest in? Uh, regions we invest globally with the focus on European markets. Uh, sectors, we do believe that we're involved in, with a mix of B2B SaaS, uh, deep tech with artificial intelligence, uh, fintech, and work simplifiers. Got it. Uh, and what stage do you typically invest in? Seed. Seed. And what's the typical check size? It may vary from several hundreds up to five million. Got it. And where can founders pitch you in case there is a direct way? Uh, look, I'm trying to respond to, uh, to the majority of letters through email. My email can be easily found on the website. Uh, I also do reply on LinkedIn and Twitter, but a little bit rarely. Got it. And uh, the last one is, uh, where can our listeners follow you? LinkedIn, Twitter. Always happy right. to uh, connect. 
Great. Uh, I'll make sure to put all those links in the show notes below so that our listeners can get there easily. And I would personally urge uh, all our listeners to go at least and check out the website, begincl.com. It's super cool. And uh, I always love when people are innovating in the VC space. So uh, great talking to you, Alex, uh, and happy investing. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you for hosting. Pleasure.